Hello and welcome viewers and subscribers of AVG News. My name is Mkholi Sinube. Uh, you may know that it's already been published on the news, different news platforms in and around Zimbabwe, that the government has finally, not the government, parliament has actually uh, finally approved amendments to the Criminal Law Codification Act uh, by putting in some clauses which were mooted in the patriotic bill, which unfortunately, or rather fortunately, didn't uh, materialize. But we are told that some of the clauses that were there have been included uh, in the amendments. Uh, we have uh, in this interview, uh, the spokesperson of ZANU-PF in South Africa, Mr. Kennedy Mapesa Mandaza, to say his views uh, in as far as this bill is concerned, to say the ZANU-PF view in as far as this bill is concerned. Uh, my brother, welcome to this show. Hello. Ah, what's happening? Thank you very much. But um, you are breaking. I'm not so sure whether it's my network or it is yours. Uh, so did you hear what I said? Or you heard part of it? Yes, I'm aware that you are talking about the the recently approved the amendments to the uh, cri criminal law amendment bill. Yes, yes. Right uh, from uh, apparently. Yes. Apparently. Um, the approval was uh, done at cabinet level. Oh, okay. okay. And the, correction. the cabinet approved the principles that are supposed to be applied uh, in um, coming up with the amendments that are going to be in the criminal law, um, amend which is the amendment bill at the moment. Yes. And... Um, as you are aware, um, uh, a number of people, including others in the civic organizations, uh, felt that at some point we needed to look at the interests of the country. Yes. And uh, in order for us to do so, we must have some kind of regulation that uh, regulates our engagement with the foreign governments that are against um, the aspirations of the country and the, it fits in in what you spoke about is the patriotic bill then uh, which now uh, part of uh, the amendments uh, speak to what the patriotic bill sought to achieve at that particular time when it was mooted. Yes, uh, you talked to some clauses. Can you briefly explain for the benefit of the viewers what these clauses are and what they entail? Um, the criminal, the, the amendments which were done, we uh, seek to punish people who conduct um, in a manner that is seen to hurt the interests of the country. But um, the idea is to enhance the provisions of the criminal law in dealing with matters relating to the country's sovereignty um, by criminalizing anyone or any action or conduct that undermines Zimbabwe's sovereignty, that undermines the dignity of the people of Zimbabwe, that undermines the independence and the national interest. Because it is a constitutional right, according to section 12 of our constitution, which speaks to our foreign policy, that uh, we should be looking at how best we can promote a, our national interests. Other than promoting our national interests, it is also a responsibility of ours, us as individuals to uh, protect. Other than protecting, we also need to promote that. So anyone, therefore, who does not promote and protect the national interests of our country is going against the Constitution. And this has been going on for some time 
where we have seen private individuals engaging with foreign governments that have gone to the extent of imposing sanctions that are illegal, which have caused the untold suffering on Zimbabwe. And there continue to stay these sanctions are uh, as a result of a number of people that have continued to agitate that the sanctions should remain in place. So now there is need uh, for government to regulate these engagements that takes place between private individuals and uh, foreign governments, which goes against the uh, Section 12 of, of our Constitution. Uh, where does this then leave ZANU-PF's own actions during the liberation struggle or just before of campaigning that because the government that was there was impeding on the right on the rights of a people, they, it had to be sanctioned. Now the same ZANU-PF, which came up, which comes from such a backdrop, then now imposes uh, this bill on a people that believe that the situation has uh, gone back if not worse, to what it was when at first uh, the liberation fighters advocated for sanctions against the Smith regime? The Smith, the, the Smith regime was uh, a, a settler regime that had come into Zimbabwe, settled in illegally in a country which is not theirs. Therefore, they impinged against the interests of the people of Zimbabwe. And right now we are talking of a country that belongs to Zimbabweans. And there is no reason why a Zimbabwean should go out to uh, speak ill against its own country. Our responsibility as people of Zimbabwe is to go out and promote and protect the interest, the national interest, uh, that, uh, which is of Zimbabwe. It is not also correct for us as Zimbabweans to go out there and speak um, things that we, which we do not have evidence um, or which we cannot substantiate. And it is time that government should do, then criminalize any actions that speak uh, ill against the government that bring about um, unsubstantiated claims and also, we have seen a trend where Zimbabweans, whenever we have a national, an international gathering, we tend to, to, to come together to speak ill or demonstrate so that we get uh, international attention. That again is working against our national interest as enshrined in the constitution that all of us as Zimbabweans agreed to in 2018. And the, if we were doing anything, if the government is doing anything against the constitution, then it would be something else. But here is a clause that all of us who voted in 2018 said we have a right and responsibility as Zimbabweans to protect and promote our national interests. And what has gone wrong now for us as individuals to begin to do things that are against our constitution? Uh, there is uh, a conflation between ZANU-PF as the governing party and the Zimbabwean government. Don't you see this bill then confusing people as to somebody criticizing ZANU-PF being viewed as uh, having breached some sections of this bill? There is nothing that that um, uh, uh, the the current amendments seek to protect the ZANU-PF. It's the national interest. It's not the interest of ZANU-PF, but the interest of Zimbabwe as a country. And it so happens that we are presiding over government. And as a result, we are seen in cabinet approving amendments which some of the parliamentarians who, are, who come from the opposition have said are going to support for as long as they do not impinge on the human rights and do not go against the constitution. So th there is no conflation here. The ZANU-PF is doing what it is supposed to do in cabinet because the majority of the uh, members in cabinet are ZANU-PF, but parliament has the responsibility 
now to go through these same amendments and make sure that if there is anything against the, the constitution, then it is corrected. And that parliament is dominated by ZANU PF. Do you foresee a situation whereby parliament will say these sections uh, are more protective of, of a political party than they are protecting of Zimbabweans as a people and Zimbabwe as a country? Well, the advantage of being a ruling party is that. Um, you have many people going in in parliament to represent the interests of many people, of many constituencies. So if it so happens that the representatives of ZANU-PF who are in the majority are speaking for the majority of the people in the country, then whatever that is passed in parliament speaks to the interests, the wishes and the aspirations of the generality of the Zimbabweans. But I don't think that the parliamentarians that are in the Zimbabwean government, in the Zimbabwean parliament, uh, panda to, to, to the whims and caprices of a particular party per se. They are there to do things that they are expected to, to do as a parliamentarians representing their constituencies. So we hope that at any given time, they will interrogate the amendments and out of rationale, and inform the decision, what we are going to have finally as an act speaks to the wishes and the desires of the people of Zimbabwe. And they are the ones that asked for the patriotic bill because they have seen that there are people who are abusing the democracy that is in the country to sell out the, uh, the, the current um, uh, um, Morrison Nyati of the modern, the modern day Morrison Nyati that we have in our country. Um, in a normal country, uh, which I doubt if Zimbabwe is, citizens would feel obliged to defend their own country. But do you think uh, Zimbabwe is a normal country? If it is, then why would government need to enact these kinds of bills to try and rein in people and force them to be patriotic? I, 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 I would want to believe that uh, you are not sincere in that question because uh, if we look at the Logan Act, which is in America, which has the same principles like the ones that were mooted in the Patriotic uh, Bill and part of what is now contained in the amendment um, the bill, if, if America has that, and many of us think that America is the epitome of democracy and human rights, then there is nothing amiss in Zimbabwe coming up with amendments that uh, seeks to protect its interests. Yet America and other countries do the same. Zimbabwe is a normal country and it is doing what is right for its citizenry. Do you believe that America is the epitome of democracy? Well, democracy is not like Coca-Cola, like uh, one other speaker said. What obtains in America is unique to the Americans and cannot be forced through the throats of Zimbabweans, South Africans, and so on. So while East America subscribes to democracy, we do also subscribe to democracy, but we need also to take note of the circumstances and the environment in which we operate. So we yeah. cannot take hook, line, and sink what happens in America. We design it and tailor it to the needs and the aspirations of the people uh, of Zimbabwe. Yeah, the reason why I ask this is because you seem to try and justify the existence of the Lock and Act with the Patriotic Bill or the sections uh, of the Criminal Law Codification Act, Codification Act. So that's why I had to ask that because I would believe that as a governing party, you came up with this independently based on what is happening in Zimbabwe on the ground. Sure, you, you are very right. That why I still that is why I say that Zimbabwe is a, a, a normal country. Zimbabwe, whatever it comes up with, is dictated by the wishes, the, the and what is currently in the country and which serves 
the interests of the people of Zimbabwe. And what we have at the moment, while least we argue uh, and say America has something similar to that, it is because of what people normally say and, and think that it is Zimbabwe that is doing this for the first time. It has been done elsewhere and people did not contend, they did not argue. But why now bring it up when it is being done by, when Zimbabwe is coming up with something similar to that, but tailor-made to attend to the challenges and what we need seek to achieve in Zimbabwe? Yeah, one would say that it's very easy for America to come up with these kinds of laws, but uh, because they have working institutions, the argument in Zimbabwe that we have is that parliament is in the hands of ZANU-PF. The institutions that are in Zimbabwe are heavily controlled by ZANU-PF. We've had ZANU-PF officials saying that we are the army, we are the police, we are everything. So do you think there is then any way out for citizens other than going out to the international community to say we have got no role i mean we've got no space here we've got no breathing space can you therefore try and force these people to respect democracy to respect uh, our, the wills of the people which 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 people zimbabwean people going to seek assistance from the americans or from any other uh, any other country yes. if you need but assistance for yes. anything that you think is not happening, uh, going on well, you need to use the institutions that are in Zimbabwe. These institutions whose perception is that they belong. Mm. Yes, you were still talking about the institutions. Sorry about the network there. Yes, I was saying, and I will say it vehemently. Yes. Institutions, whichever institutions, be it the army, the police, the parliament, uh, and so on and so on, they belong to the people of Zimbabwe. It is a wrong perception that is peddled by people who do not want to see Zimbabwe progress that the institutions belong to ZANU-PF. The truth of the matter is ZANU-PF is the governing party. It is the party that has the majority of MPs in parliament. And ordinarily, if you get to parliament, you would then expect to find <clears throat> many MPs and when the discussions take place, and they go to, to a vote. Obviously, if ZANU PF MPs are in agreement, they are going to win. All other institutions are independent of what happens at the, 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 the ZANU PF headquarters. We have our own people that are running the party, and we have people that are in government who are our deployees. But Mr. Mandaza, we, we've heard ZANU-PF officials saying, and I repeat this, we are the army, we are the police, and ZANU-PF as a party has not said anything publicly to, to, to dispel these reckless statements. Then why, why would Zimbabweans believe that the government has got, is presiding over these independent institutions? You rightfully said the reckless. There are people who recklessly say that. Yeah. But it, I am saying it right now that all these institutions, they are government institutions. They are why not government institutions. People, why are these people not reprimanded for their statements? ZANU-PF is an institution which has, uh, which has rules and regulations that are supposed to be followed. Do we do not sanction people through the media. People are sanctioned through uh, protocols that are laid down. And it is not always that you need to go into the public domain to say that we have sanctioned so and so for this which has happened, which requires the attention of a party, which is an institution which is in Zimbabwe. And that does not happen elsewhere. But all that happens in an institution or any other organization has to go into the public domain. But the fact of the matter, which is true, the truth, is yeah. that these institutions that are perceived to be ZANU-PF institutions are government institutions that are being presided over at the moment by the governing party, which happens to be ZANU-PF. 
And then where does these amendments uh, leave the media and people commenting on social media, according to you? No, the 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 media is still as um, still has its freedoms. Uh, those that are on social media still have the same freedom that they have been having for as long as they are operating within the confines of the uh, of the laws of Zimbabwe. What is being said in the current amendments is that we need to put a stop or criminalize citizens who have unauthorized negotiations with the foreign governments. Okay. We need to criminalize the actions that are unpatriotic. And, and how do we that tell that these actions disturb. are unpatriotic? Anything that is against national interest is unpatriotic. And how do we draw the line between national interest and ZANU-PF interest? Well, that is, a, that is now the responsibility of individuals. Because if you are looking at Zimbabwe as a nation, then you look at ZANU-PF as a party. And all the other parties, ZANU-PF's interests are to advance the interests, aspirations, and wishes of the people of Zimbabwe. That is ZANU-PF's interest. Which are the interests that are collective, collective to the people of Zimbabwe. Each one of us should have interests of our country, of our people, and which we should be advancing. And it so happens that ZANU-PF as a party seeks to advance those interests of the people of Zimbabwe. And then would and ask, they are not ZANU-PF interests. And then somebody would ask that if somebody is looting state resources or somebody is stealing from the people, as have been allegations against some government officials and ZANU PF officials, they are also unpatriotic. Why is it? The, why is this not included in the in the amendment? Surely, you are very right, and I can tell you that in the current amendments, part of the things that, that have been said in the amendment which were approved are harsher sentences for rapists and and murderers, and the I. There are also provisions for people who are caught looting also. We have laws that speak to that. For as long as people continue to speak, make allegations without unsubstantiated, um, without evidence per se, then it, they remain allegations. If we begin to say everyone with if somebody alleges that you have stolen then you have to go to, go to court if you have been alleged that you have the, let us come up with evidence zanu pf is very clear it is against corruption it is against anything that seeks to destroy the economy of zimbabwe what we need to do collectively is to come up with the evidence that will make sure that the people when they are taken to court they can then be uh, um, found guilty. But if we do not present the, 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 the evidence, it becomes difficult. That's why we end up having what we have uh, heard people saying is the catch and release. An allegation is made, nobody comes up with the evidence and the person is released. So we as citizens of Zimbabwe should take it upon ourselves to make sure that allegations that we make they should be backed by sub, uh, uh, substantive uh, evidence which can send these people behind bars. Okay, and, and when do you expect this bill to be taken to, uh, these amendments to be taken to parliament and when do you expect them to be uh, uh, signed into law? Um, the process is that after, after uh, cabinet has approved, has made its approval, then it is taken now to the Ministry of, um, uh, of Justice, in the legal whatever way now they draft the the bill which then is taken to parliament the process the parliamentary processes um depend on the debate that goes on there but the sooner that comes out the better it will set a, 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 a um it will give us an opportunity to give the country an opportunity to move forward without people calling for 
uh, more sanctions. <laughs> and do you think that this will be passed into law before the elections next year? That would be our desire. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Mandaza, uh, for giving us your time. Maybe your winding up statement. My winding up statement is that um, as Zimbabweans, we have a responsibility enshrined in the constitution to make sure that we promote and protect uh, the interests of Zimbabwe, our dignity, and so on. And it is also our responsibility of Zimbabwe to take up the challenge that is currently in, in our country, where the government is saying uh, we are, are, are the masters of our own destiny through the mantra that says that Nikaino Vakwanevayo. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was Zanu PF spokesperson in South Africa, Mr. Kennedy Mapesa Mandaza. Uh, we have problems with our connection, but I hope this uh, interview is in going our to be country possible. and build our country to be the best that we would want it to be. Okay, thank you very much. Welcome. Okay, well, ladies and gentlemen, that is Zanu PF spokesperson for South Africa, Mr. Kennedy Mapesa Mandaza, uh, speaking on the patriotic bill or rather amendments to the Criminal Law Codification Act, uh, which is going to encompass or incorporate sections that punish Zimbabweans or actions by Zimbabweans who go out there to negotiate for what he has already said, sanctions against the country or to rather pull down the image of the country or try and drag the image of the country through the mud. Uh, please do not forget to subscribe to this channel, like this video and share it. And we expect to have interviews with various people, law experts and other political parties based on the bill.